77% of the population, 77% of the employees interviewed are dissatisfied with their wellness uh, initiatives. Entrepreneur journey started by accident. We were not meant to be, we never planned to be entrepreneurs. Essentially, why do you mix workouts? Because if you keep doing the same thing, then every 90 days, your body establishes a new normal. So if you keep doing yoga for 90 days, your body stops responding. And because we had our nutritionist services in our AI coaching launch in 2018, we were the only guys. So we scaled tremendously during that time. We did a report uh, with uh, a six lakh employees in the country and the top corporates called the State of Fitness and Wellness in India. Akshay Varma, could you please share, uh, share your uh, entrepreneurial journey because uh, I guess you are partnered with your sister and uh, you started uh, FitPass, uh, uh, I think in the year 2015 or 16, if I am right. And I want to hear about uh, the overall journey and uh, what made you to start this uh, startup as well. If you could explain, that would be very wonderful. Yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, um, we started in 2015, that you're absolutely correct about. Okay. Uh, our entrepreneur journey started by accident. We were not meant to be, we never planned to be entrepreneurs. Um, both of us come, uh, we're brother, sister. Uh, we come from a family of professionals and people who've always worked hard um, and had jobs. We've never had businesses. So um, it was never a plan that we will start something on our own. And obviously the family also got very uh, jittery when they realized that all their eggs are in one basket because both son and daughter are doing the same thing. Uh, so yeah, so that's uh, why it began. Uh, I used to work uh, it, uh, abroad. I, I was in London for a very long time. I used to work in investment banking and private equity there. Uh, but I'd been somebody who's always active. I'd played football for Delhi State. Uh, I'd, I'd been active in sport. I'd played cricket for Oxford University. I'm a full blue. Um, so when I came back to India, then I moved to New York. I went to Columbia. Many things happened and I came back home on a sabbatical. There was no intention of staying back. And in when I'd come back, I faced some uh, irritation and some barriers to accessing fitness and to being active. Uh, and the core mission we, are, we actually try and solve is to defeat inactivity. So just staying active was becoming difficult. And my sister Arushi, my co-founder, uh, she was working with the World Bank at that time. And she had her own reasons uh, and she had to mix workouts. She had some, uh, and because you have to mix workouts, which means that essentially why do you mix workouts? Because if you keep doing the same thing, then every 90 days, your body establishes a new normal. So if you keep doing yoga for 90 days, your body stops responding. So you have to mix it up. Maybe you want to do dance with it. Maybe you want to do cardio with it, maybe. So that is when you really want to make an impact on your body and your lifestyle. And if you have any health issues or hormonal issues, mixing workouts is the only way to handle it. But mixing workouts meant you needed two or three different memberships, a yoga studio, a dance studio, a gym. So 30,000 a piece, that was a lakh a year that you had to spend. So my own barriers and her own barriers, we realized that, okay, somehow for a country that is so young, where we keep talking about India being the youngest workforce, India being the youngest population, we're actually making access to health and access to fitness unaffordable. And which is why what really got to us was that people would talk about India as the diabetic capital, hypertensive capital, and that was that was so wrong because 50% of the population was below 35 uh, and between 18, 70% was below 35 overall. These guys were not hypertensive, not diabetic yet. Right? So, but fitness was so unaffordable, staying active was so unaffordable that they would eventually land up there. So then everybody talking about a $5 trillion economy or demographic dividend. Today you have demographic dividend because you're 27 years median age. In 15 years time, you're 42, 43. Then there is no demographic dividend. So if everybody falls sick and is only buying medicines. There is no $5 trillion economy. So that was when we realized that what we're facing is what every young person is facing. They don't want to uh, get locked into long-term contracts with gyms where they're stuck, they feel stuck, they feel that they have not got their money's worth. And in the entire Indian consumption basket, except fitness, except gyms, nobody wants you to pay upfront for the whole year. 
right? I go to the same hairdresser. I've been going there for the last 23 years. He knows I come every three weeks, but he has never told me to pay for the whole year. My grocer doesn't do it. My milk supplier doesn't do it. My landlord doesn't do it. My utility provider doesn't do it. In all these places where I have higher utilization, they also don't want me to pay for the whole year upfront. But the fitness industry said, please pay me upfront, whether you use it or not is your problem. So 97% of the people felt cheated. So we realized this was one place where consumer was not king. So we set out on a mission to make fitness affordable, accessible, and make consumer the king. Okay. So basically, uh, you started a, a chain of uh, uh, this uh, gyms, or what exactly is the Fit Pass, actually? If you can give me uh, some intro to that, uh, your startup, right? That would be very wonderful. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Fit Pass is one single smart membership to a network of 7,500 gyms and fitness centers. So with one membership, you can work out anywhere, anytime. So you have multiple options close to home, multiple options close to office, multiple options when you travel to other cities. So it is an all-you-can-eat buffet. And similar to a buffet, it's not just one dish, it's not just gyms. It's gym, yoga, Pilates, Zumba, Krav Maga, CrossFit, mixed martial arts, rock climbing, swimming. No matter how you want to stay active, when you want to stay active, where you want to stay active, all of that is available through one single membership. And then as we grew, we are today the world's largest AI coaching platform. So if you don't want to go to a gym or to a fitness studio, you want to work out at home, what you need is a coach. And that coach comes with, uh, our AI is that coach. We launched this in 2018 when nobody knew of AI. So today we serve more than 7 lakh people a month through the AI coaching platform. Then we have nutritionists who are attached to you 24-7. So obviously, if you're exercising, then you want to eat, right? And in case you don't want to start with exercise, you want to start with diet planning and then progress to uh, exercise. All of that comes together. We've got something called FitPass TV, where we have licensed content from 4,000 global studios. It took us two years of work to license, to get the royalties, get music rights, get content rights. So we distribute all of that content from global studios exclusively through the FitPass app. So if you wanted to do Zumba with the Colombians who invented it, or you wanted to do soul cycle classes like how Michelle Omaba does in New York, or you want to do kickboxing with British athletes, mixed martial arts with Australian athletes, all of that is available on FitPass TV. And then in case you do fall ill sometime, then you get unlimited doctor uh, consults, uh, health checkup vouchers, free pharma delivery. So everything related to your fitness and your wellness is on one uh, app called the FitPass app. That's wonderful. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll go back uh, uh, to the like initial days of your uh, entrepreneurial journey. Uh, see, basically, India is, uh, we all know that it's like one of the youngest uh, uh, in terms of population, it's one of the uh, largest. And in terms of age, it is one of the youngest. I think average age is uh, nearly the 29 to 35 age uh, uh, still, I think. But the problem is, uh, the as you rightly mentioned about the access to these uh, fitness centers or wellness centers. But don't you think, uh, still in India, these uh, fitness centers uh, are still uh, comes under, or we can categorize as an unorganized sector because there is no kind of uh, like a well established plan. Though it is coming uh, recently, uh, this uh, cult fate and all those people, they are recently entering the market. But way back in uh, 2015, that was completely unorganized. So, what are the initial challenges that you have faced, and what are the strategies that uh, you put in place? to reach out to the customers? So that is a very good question because uh, when we started in 2015, India was solving for roti, kapata, and makan. What I mean by that is in roti, you had uh, Zomato growing, Swiggy, you had Tiny Owl, Fasos, Food Panda, some names don't exist today. Kapada, you had Mintra, Jabong, a bunch of other fashion retailers, some names don't exist. In Makan, you had housing, common floor, magic bricks, 99 acres. Because some names were prop tiger, some names don't exist today. In that era, we came and said, guys, we want to make India fit. And we want to, uh, the, the young Indian is aspirational, wants to look good, wants to feel strong, wants to not get unhealthy. We want to help them. But India was solving something else. And you correctly said that there is no pan-India chain. You, you mentioned one brand. That one brand, I think, is only a brand in terms of assets and presence. 
we barely have a few locations like and as an operator they are no different to any other gym or fitness chain right so because it was unorganized that was the opportunity and that was also the difficulty so when we had started uh we were the first in india and the 19 copycats came within two months because some of them had our uh, tncs had us listed as the grievance officer they just copied it so suddenly it got really hot but what we knew was that this was not a so a lot of people told us you'll have a first mover advantage so we used to tell them that in the army the first one through the door actually gets shot right so it's not always an advantage when you have to work in a sector where you have to first educate the market then monetize the market so when you know that you're stepping into this you have to be patient it is not an overnight victory so one thing we were very clear about was that because it is unorganized that is the opportunity and to or, to organize an unorganized sector takes time it is not a capital gain it doesn't matter how much money you throw at the problem it is going it needs empathy it needs you to understand the problem it needs you to, it needs all your stakeholders to believe in you and trust you and trust comes with time not with money so we we were very clear about that so that was one big strategy that we knew that we had to be patient so today after eight and a half years we command 52% of india's market we have 11 lakh members actively working out a month everybody who thought india does not want to get fit has been shown the mirror today our customers work out seven to eight times a month the global average is 4.12 in us 4.17 in europe so indians are working out double so everybody who thought no 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 india indians only love to eat and they don't want to uh, work out or be healthy or look good or look have been proven wrong the problem was it was so unaffordable young people couldn't afford it so you only saw above 40 people in the gym and the fitness center earlier and they were not the people who really cared about it they were there because it was a social um, how much you paid for a gym membership was a social conversation it is exactly like how when back in the day if you assess the airline market when only air india flew our skies people would say oh indians love to be on the train it is cultural for them then came captain gopinath he gave you deccan and suddenly people started flying and then your airline industry started booming so until you come and disrupt an industry and until you do not make consumer king disruption doesn't happen so that is what our strategy was to ensure that we wanted to bring workouts at 100 rupees a workout why 100 because uber was picking you up from one place and dropping you at the other for 100 rupees so matter swiggy delivers food to you for 100 rupees your consumption is 100 rupees because as a human being you are making an average 27 28 year old is making 27 28000 a month right in that money in that budget they have to go out they have to go on a date they have to uh, eat out they have to buy fast fashion they have to uh, go for a movie and they have to get fit that is not the only thing so that is what you have to solve for if you're not solving for that then you're just not solving at all so we had to bring them bring the economics and scale so that it would fit the indian consumption basket at scale and that is where i think we have now achieved it has taken us a long time and i think the strategy was to be very focused on what we're trying to build and that it is going to take time that's wonderful actually so while building this uh, fit pass uh, startup right uh, from the business point of view what are the challenges you faced and also since uh, brother and sister see basically uh, when uh, most of the people say that uh, uh, when you if you want to start a business don't uh, partner with your sisters or spouse or you know because it's going to be very difficult so how was it in your case actually because you are partnered with your sister and how was your overall journey i think i could not have asked for a better partner i hope she says the same thing i do not know you'll have to ask her but uh, uh, a lot of people yes they say that you shouldn't uh, start businesses with people you love or people you care about but i think it's the other way why start a business with someone you don't know at all it is best to start a business with somebody who you trust implicitly and you know they will always bring their best self and their best version and they will always give their best so is it not better to start a business with somebody who you can trust wholeheartedly so but, but you're right uh, it was initially it was slightly difficult because we used to work as always spoke about 
at work, at home, work is all that we spoke about when we were building, when we were young, when we were not mature leaders today, it's very different. Akshay and Arushi, you see from what Akshay and Arushi were eight years ago. Right? We developed a lot of skills. We got a lot of maturity. We faced so much on the way. 2015, we started. 16, we saw demonetization that really did not affect us, but really affected our gym partners, which had a cash-heavy business. So they suffered. So we consequently suffered. We helped them at that time. 17, we were... We were okay. 18 came uh, GST where fitness got classified as a luxury uh, service because it had ACs. So for some reason, the government thought fitness should be, uh, the GST levy should be 28% because we had ACs. So suddenly the price had, you'd move from a service tax regime to 15% to now 28%. So the cost had gone up 13%. Who was going to bear it? The gyms, the consumer, FitPass. Then we solved that. We represented with the government. We got it back to 18%, but it is still 3% more expensive than service tax regime. We went through all of that. 2020 came COVID. We got locked down. So the amount we have seen in the last eight and a half years is immense. And I think I could not have done it without uh, somebody like Arushi or only Arushi because the trust was so much and the love was so much and the, com the shared ambition was so much. I think, yeah, people might find it difficult initially, but once you establish boundaries, and once you allocate responsibilities and you divide it amongst yourself, then you know that the other person is going to do their best. There is no second guessing. With somebody unknown, you're always second guessing. So that we never had to face. We never had to, I don't think Arushi and I ever thought about that I didn't do a good job or I didn't try my best or she didn't try her best. I think because we always knew that it was always easy to keep moving forward. Okay, that's a wonderful lesson for uh, any person who wants to partner with uh, maybe siblings or spouse. That's a wonderful lesson. Now, um, in the uh, course of discussion, uh, you took some topics like GST and also the COVID. Uh, GST, yeah, uh, we know like uh, it has a impact. It has affected uh, the entire business. Uh, uh, economy uh, in the initial days, but once the government started learning about, uh, even government was not clear about how it is going to affect, but over a period of time, I think there also uh, accommodated a few changes in the GST uh, filing. But now let's talk about uh, COVID, because that is a time where entire India was at home and there was no access to or any kind of fitness activities or uh, wellness activities. So whether that was um, kind of, uh, 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 you took it as an opportunity to spread your uh, business or what was the thing that that uh, triggered your mind during COVID time? That is, uh, so obviously things are much clearer in the rear view mirror than they are in the windshield. So now when I look back, I think I'm going to speak with a lot of clarity, but I don't think so much clarity existed while we were in COVID and in the lockdown. Because that time there were many factors affecting your decision making. Um, so if I look back now, I, uh, I think COVID was a very difficult time for everybody, uh, especially the Delta wave. I think every, there was nobody who did not lose somebody close to them. However, one realization happened to people that those who were locked in were not getting sick. So there was a big realization that immunity at home or fitness at home was important. People were craving it. And because we had our nutritionist services in our AI coaching launch in 2018, we were the only guys. So we scaled tremendously during that time because other people suddenly went to build digital solutions. We had built it in 2018. We were the only guys who had it. And we were the only guys who scaled so fast. So I think COVID presented us that. But the ability to pay off the consumer and the willingness to pay off the consumer had severely dropped. So while our mission was getting served, financial constraints were many that we had to tackle. However, one thing that happened for us uh, was, I think the government of India finally woke up. We had been talking to the government for three years. Mr. Uh, Arun Jaitley, when he was finance minister, had called me for what is called pre-budget consultations in 2017. So where every industry stalwart is called and everybody represents about their business or their sector, so there was like Mr. Sunil Bharti Mittal from Airtel. There was, um, there were a lot of these leaders. I shouldn't name drop, but like all of them are from, from the various sectors. And I, it was Akshay Varma for fitness. So I had represented that uh, at that time in 2017, that in your taxable income, you could, if you bought medicines, you could reduce 30,000 rupees. If you bought up to 30,000 worth of medicines, you can reduce that from your taxable income. So I represented that we're trying to make the country sick. 
It is a perverse incentive. We're saying, please buy medicines. Please fall sick. Please buy medicines. Save tax. It should have been the other way around. Please be fit. Please be a positive contributor to the economy. Please save tax. Which he liked. Uh, uh, our economist, our, our principal economist that time was Arvind Subramaniam. He liked it. Mr. Hasmo Kade. All these guys liked it. But in 2018, fitness was announced as a, um, a part of the budget. The word fitness was mentioned for the first time. Uh, but nothing much happened. So we kept working with the government to include it as part of insurance. Because why we kept saying, the government kept saying health insurance. We explained to them that health insurance, either rename it and call it hospitalization expense reimbursement policy. Because it does nothing to keep me healthy or bring me back to health. And uh, the way the uh, insurance market is operating, only those people, average age of insurance buyer in India, according to IRDA, is 36. 50% of the country is below 35. So, okay. so your product is alienated half of them. It is a product that nobody cares about. It's not resonating with the young India. So what is happening is only those people are buying insurance who want it, which means you have negative and adverse claim ratios, which means every year insurance prices go up. Every year it becomes unaffordable for young India. So we told IRDA in very plain words that you have failed as a development authority. So unless you include things that resonate with people, it is going to work. So we were trying to include fitness in it. It took us three years. They were not listening. But they were listening. They were, pilots were happening. Things were happening. But the policy had not changed. However, then came COVID. And people realized that the doctors didn't care who you were, how much bank balance you had, what position you commanded in society. They asked you, do you have any comorbidities? Most of those comorbidities were preventable lifestyle diseases. Right? Hypertension, obesity, preventable by what? Preventable by activity and by good nutrition. So 4th of September 2020, which is smack in the middle of lockdown. We were in lockdown from March 2020 to November 21. 4th of September 2020, IRDA comes out of the regulation that health insurance will cover access to fitness centers. So that was a big win for us, but it was a, so for us, we went into preparation mode because we knew the day lockdown would open, we would be needed. So we started expanding. We started preparing. We started redoing our tech. We started scaling. We started rebuilding. While we were all facing our personal difficulties and other challenges, we were very committed to delivery. So I cannot thank my team enough because everybody stuck together. Everybody banded together. Because everybody also saw a ray of light. And then once COVID opened, today you buy any insurance in the market, SBI General, ICICI Lombard, Star Health, Neva Bupa, Care Health, whoever, FitPass is a part of everybody's product. That's wonderful, actually. Yeah, now let's talk about the lifestyle, actually, because that is where uh, your uh, solution come and help people, actually. During lockdown time, if you observe, uh, like we all know that uh, India was uh, at home and uh, they were not able to, they were not supposed to come out and they started doing some of their own activities. But once the lockdown is over, uh, still this work from home uh, started continuing and employees were demanding to uh, get that access, work from home access from their employer. But if you see the lifestyle that has changed over a period of time in terms of uh, say kind of uh, health and also the physical health and the men uh, mental health, there's a, gra there's a uh, what do you say, it's a kind of a complete uh, drastic change we can see. Uh, recently, like a couple of people's uh, uh, in terms of um, their health, though they were very fit, but they were not able to cope up with the, some mental health issues and all those things. And they had to undergo a lot of uh, uh, trauma in their family and also in their work life. So in uh, in this case, how this, uh, uh, my question is now this fitness and wellness, right? Whether it is a lifestyle uh, aspect or we should treat it as a kind of sports related because there is a major difference when we treat this fitness and wellness into lifestyle, right? People will tend to take it more seriously. But when it comes to sports, right? People who are uh, towards sports or people who like sports, right? They may take it. So how do we classify these things actually? I think after COVID and just a younger India that is more aware and more globally aware realizes that their health is not entertainment, that it is not a sport. 
their health, they realize that they are not the the average life expectancy is no longer 59. Today, average life expectancy is 79, hitting 80. So nobody is planning to retire and be old and bedridden at 55, right? Everybody wants, they know that they'll retire financially by 55 or even earlier or, and they want the next 30, 40 years to be amazing too. Right? People know that. I think there is a generation that is before the millennials that has somehow still chooses to ignore it, but that is not how millennials and Gen Z behaves. So they understand that their health is important. They understand that uh, they want to, uh, fitness does not anymore mean that you have to look like Brad Pitt. Fitness means that you take care of yourself in every way. And I think I'll take you back to the class four textbook definition of good health. It is the state of physical and mental well-being. And both of them are interconnected. If your body is in distress, your mind cannot be stress-free. If your mind is distressed, your body cannot be stress-free. So you have to balance. And that flow and that uh, how you arrive at that balance is so personal to everybody that there is no prescriptive solution, which is the ethos of FitPass, actually, that we give you everything, however you want to be fit or start your wellness journey, you're free to do and do it at your own pace. Nobody's telling you that, that fitness is a destination. Oh, if you continue doing this, you will be an elite athlete. What we're telling you is, guys, in any activity is better than zero activity. And that is something everybody understands. There is a book called Atomic Habits. It yeah. talks about principle of incremental improvement. So one percent improvement every day for 365 days, which is 1.01 .01 to the power 365, is 37.8. But if you reduce or if you... Uh, do not improve every day and you fall short. So if you do, if you uh, don't improve by 1% and you short, fall short by 1%, so that's 0. 0.99 to the power 365. That is 0. 0.003. So you only, so this I think is very clear in people's minds. So I don't think fitness is, it's not a sport. It's not entertainment. People don't do it because they think it is fun. They understand that it is something that they need. I think by 40 people have already realized that there is no choice. Right? Because your muscles start uh, degrading at a faster rate than you've ever seen before. So and then you have a big lifestyle choice, whether you want to. And then people know, they've seen older people. It is the younger people who now don't need to be told. They already know. So that generational shift has happened. And anybody who is still not accepting it is either living under a rock or just keeping their eyes closed. Okay, that's uh, that's wonderful, actually. Yeah. So, uh, see, if you uh, if you see this uh, corporate world, right? Generally, uh, people take a lot of uh, tension and uh, because of uh, their own personal commitment or uh, the compulsion from the management side to work uh, or spend more time in the office and be productive in this case, right? So, in that case, uh, most often these employees uh, they may not focus on workouts or fitness or well, wellness as well, whether it is physical or mental, they, uh, they, they were not focusing much. But over a period of time, people are uh, taking it uh, really serious. The reason is uh, there are some tragic uh, uh, issues happened while working in a co um, company and working in a, uh, like uh, their workplace itself. Some people died because of uh, uh, work pressure and tension and all those things. Now, the question is, what are the challenges uh, uh, our uh, employees, employers are facing in India? Because uh, for any employer, employee is an asset actually. Because now we are not, we are, most of the employers are not calling their uh, uh, people as a human resource. They're calling it as a human asset. Now, if you treat these assets in a well uh, or in a better way, you are going to get a better result. So in this case, have you seen any change or have you seen any challenges these employees are uh, facing in India? You want an honest answer or you want the business answer? My dear friends, sorry for interrupting you at this moment of time. I have a request for you. We need your support to grow our channel and also reach more people. But as you all know that we cannot do it on our own. We really need your support. How you can support us? Please share the link of our channel in your network and also request your friends and family members to subscribe to our channel and show their support. Your support really matters to us. That is because with your support, we can definitely come out with a lot of good quality content related to startups 
and also business and help you in your startup journey. That is because we care for your startups. Now, as a request, please subscribe to our channel. Also, I want to know your feedback for this particular podcast. What do you feel? Please share your valuable feedback in the comment section and also please continue watching this podcast. Uh, both. <laughs> okay. So after COVID, our business grew dramatically uh, for employer-employee relationships. Every company that was global started coming to us. So basically who were earning in dollars and their employee costs were in rupees, suddenly realized that these are the only assets they have and they started coming. However, our personal understanding of the Indian market is I think a lot of HR people talk about them as human capital, but they don't treat them like that. In their mind, employee is still a cost. And I will give you an example. They say they do wellness benefits. And what does it cover? Doctor consults, health checkups, insurance. These are all actually illness benefits. They are only useful if the employee falls ill. But sick days, they only give you 15 in a year. So all the benefits are for these 15 days. What happens to the other 350 days? But when they buy a machine, they put a turbine or they buy whatever server, they'll get insurance for it. So that in case something happens, uh, if they are covered, they'll put engineers to make sure that it's fit and proper. They'll give it downtime. So the asset is treated very differently. Employee for them, even today, is treated as a cost. Anything you talk to HR or whatever about it, they will be like, what is the cost? They don't see it as an investment. You talk to them about an asset or a new machine, they will say, what is the investment? And it's very funny. You will see the word healthy. Company use, a lot of company uses, uh, every, almost every company uses the word healthy. Okay, but what do they use it for? Healthy profit, healthy growth, healthy EBITDA, healthy sales, not for the people who are delivering it. So this is, but the people have now started understanding that this is the pyramid, right? The policies are being made by people who are old and who need insurance and doctor consults. The base of the pyramid is under 35 who understand they are funding it for them. And these guys, so we did a report uh, with uh, a six lakh employees in the country and the top corporates called the state of fitness and wellness in India. I don't think there is a report of this size and this magnitude ever conducted in India. It was done with economic times. So the research methodology was spot on. And we realized that 77% of the population, 77% of the employees interviewed are dissatisfied with their wellness uh, initiatives. And why is that? Because it does not resonate with a young Indian. Most of your workforce is young. Most of the policies are designed after you fall in. And these guys want to stay fit, stay healthy. And WHO came out with the report that chronic inactivity is the primary cause of burnout. So what you referred to earlier, that people don't have time to work out, they have a lot of tension. The primary cause is chronic inactivity. I'm not saying this. WHO is saying it. Wow. There is a line called sitting is the new smoking. Sitting is killing more people in the world than smoking is. I'm not saying it. WHO is saying it. So when you put all of this in front of the employees, that's when your revolution begins. That's when CHROs and people are supposed to take notice. Otherwise, most of the CHROs are 55 plus, 50 plus. Their view of the world is very different to a 35-year-old, 30-year-old. But they are the decision makers. So the question that we should really ask all these C-suite leaders is, are you correctly and dutifully um, acting towards your fiduciary duty? Your duty towards your shareholders is to leave an organization fitter and stronger than what you inherited. Leaders who are well prepared for the organization tomorrow. So are you listening to them? You ask your employees today, do they want to become CEO? They'll say yes. Will they take them and ask them if, you, if they want the blood pressure medicine and the insulin shot with it? They'll say no. So if you've not recognized that, then you're failing. So you might be sitting in your fancy office, in your fancy car, but you're not listening. So the organizations who have listened, are seeing that, right? And so we, in that report, we also tested for attrition. Attrition is a big problem. And a lot of people, and, and India went through the great resignation, the great attrition. 
And everybody who had a wellness program that was well designed, including access to physical activity, access to fitness memberships like FitPass. And with FitPass, we proved that attrition fell 43%. Wow. And, and this is across uh, 17 companies that we did this study. 17 companies who each had more than 5,000 employees. One of them had 3 lakh employees. So the data set was huge. So your earlier point that people have woken up to it, yes. Has everybody woken up to it? Obviously not. So there are front runners in the pack. And now there are followers. So we had the first believers right after COVID. And like I, why I said they were global companies, because globally, acceptance of health and um, necessity to invest in your employees was established. Suddenly, those practices were brought to India because they realized that most of their employee base is actually in India. And this is the BPOs, the KPOs, where the BPO, KPO center for the world. So this is where most of the employees were. So the benefits started coming. Then they started looking for people like us. So without having a sales team, we suddenly got millions of dollars of business flowing our way. And then we just realized that, okay, this is only the cream. Majority India still needs to be educated, which is why we did that report, which is why we wanted to put it in front of people that a lot of people thought that only doing mental health was enough. Because in, within a year and a half, people were saying that the uptake is not enough. And you don't realize that and, uh, when you tell people that when you give only one solution it is, and, be, and you try and be prescriptive, it is never adopted. Most of you have a cafeteria in your office. Does everybody eat there? No, it is not possible. So you have to, in today's world, you have to provide options to your employees, to your customers, for them to do what is best for them. To assume that you know better is the biggest mistake you're making. And to not empower your employee is the biggest disservice you're doing to your organization. So this change in thought is slowly happening. And I think that is the day when people will truly realize that employees are assets. So we're definitely in the right direction, but we have a long way to go. Okay, that's wonderful. Yeah, in the conversation, like uh, you mentioned about one report, uh, basically the state of fitness and wellness uh, in corporate, uh, especially focusing India. on the, in, in yeah. India, right? So can you throw some, what are the key findings uh, you got while uh, generating that report or while uh, interviewing the, or while talking to the people? What are the major key findings? And also, uh, what people, uh, what is the perception of the people about fitness? Because when you interview people, right, they will tell about their perception about fitness and wellness. So you might have captured that also. If you can share yes. that insight, very well. Okay. First major insight which shocked everybody was that 77% employees are dissatisfied with current programs. This, this was so dissonant to all that you hear from their leaders because their leaders go on about how how much effort they put into designing these programs and how well the programs are doing. And then you get hit by a number like 77% are dissatisfied, which means that it was never a participative process. So when you start getting into that, which the report gets into, when you start talking to CHROs and leaders, like, how participative was it? Right? How many employees, how many representatives of the younger audience or the younger target was part of policy making? Then you realize that it is not a participative process. So imagine your entire effort has gone into designing something which 77% people are saying it's not working for them. 96% people feel that there is zero flexibility. Everything that has been designed is rigid. There is no optionality. They cannot customize. They, and in today's world where everybody is digitally savvy, everybody looks for hyper-personalization in every experience they have from food to fashion to everything to content. Everything is hyper-personalized. Suddenly you're saying health and wellness, which is obviously unique to my body, my being, my mind, my humanity. You're telling me this prescriptive. So 96% people are unable to get over the fact that there is no flexibility. And then there are things like about 45% uh, uh, people uh, said that there is absolutely no option for physical health and fitness memberships that is being provided by the company. So to your question about how do they perceive fitness, I think everybody understands the importance of staying active, of doing things that keep them active. And it doesn't have to be every day. It doesn't have to be, they don't have to work out the whole time. But whenever they want to, or whenever they can find time to, they should have that option because they're obviously giving, the, the workplace wants them to come to them every morning, be there for the next eight, 10 hours, do their best. 
but then they leave the rejuvenation part on to the employee that the employee somehow has to go back find a way to rejuvenate and come back the next day so until the employer becomes a part of this people are not really uh, able to people like people are willing to give up employment or give up promotions that they think that their lifestyle and their health is not going to be balanced and that is a big shift today so personalization dissatisfaction lack of physical health and fitness memberships these are the key findings how people view it is very clear people find it important and they understand the importance of activity where they are dissatisfied with the employer is that the employer is not participating in making participating in making that accessible okay uh see now in india uh, we had a time where only well established companies uh, uh, well uh, branded companies or also like uh, the existence of those companies were there but over a period of time maybe uh, in the last 10 years even startups are coming out have you or do you see any change the way these uh, startups they are treating their employees and this uh, well established uh, treating their employees is there any change or both are uh, treating their employees as just a resource what is your view on that I don't think we should look at companies or startups like that. I think it's about the leadership. Is the leadership empathetic? Is the leadership well-rounded? How does leadership view their colleagues and their employees is the question. So whether it is a small mom and pop shop or it is a large company with lakhs of employees, it comes culture flows from the top, empathy flows from the top. So it is how pe- the leaders were in charge. What is their view? and unfortunately health and fitness is something where a lot of personal bias does creep in if you maybe have some extra blessings from god and despite being inactive and eating what you want you feel you're healthy you feel that is what everybody does so you generalize and you make such mistakes where you think that everybody should it's just easy just sleep it off just don't think about it but that is not how the human body works that is not how anatomy works that is not how science works that is you are basically failing all everything that darwin and science established so if you have leaders like this it becomes a problem but if you have if you have leaders who understand that the same way your skills are different your body is different your mind is different your ability to learn is different your ability to contribute is different or if you understand everything is different then you find solutions like that for everybody and you want everyone to upgrade in every aspect of their life So there are leaders who want to uplift, and there are leaders who do not. So I don't think it's a company size thing or a company resource. It is a leadership question. A leadership question. Yeah. Now having this input, like uh, the key findings, how FitPass is going to contribute to enhance the well-being of employees in the corporate sector? So that is also a good question. So FitPass currently works with about seventeen lakh employees across the country. Wow. So it is a huge number. um uh, and this does not cover employees who are covered by insurance this is directly what fitpass serves um the biggest uh, i think flexibility we offer to the corporates is that every employee is able to design their own way of how they want to get fit and stay fit and be, and feel well so how we ignite the personal fitness journeys and wellness journeys and how we keep them on it so whether you want to exercise whether you want to do nutrition planning whether you want to work out at home whether you want to call a doctor whether you want to call uh, speak to a psychologist whether you want bereavement support all of that is part of one app and one solution so once you have the subscription you can do whatever you want and it's not that all 12 months you do the same thing right fitness and wellness is a journey right there are ebbs and flows sometimes you're at peak fitness sometimes you're not sometimes you're having a low day so whatever you need to feel well which can be many things that you need all of it comes in one place so it's no longer prescriptive it is where the employee gets empowered so one is that two is we have hrms tools which help the hr and financial decision makers to be able to track track roi track whether sick days are reducing absenteeism has reduced health expenditures are reducing so how things has attrition reduced so how your investment in a program like this is actually affecting you is also be so what you can't track and what you can't measure you can't improve so allowing that in both hands is what how fitpass is empowering better decision making and better lives for our employees that's wonderful yeah i think uh, 
uh, I think a pit pass and your entire team is uh, doing <clears throat> a pretty good job uh, in educating and creating awareness about uh, fitness and wellness. Uh, now uh, we are think uh, we have uh, uh, come to the last uh, leg of this podcast. Uh, any uh, kind of uh, input or uh, kind of a word uh, for young Indians, uh, especially focusing on fitness and wellness from your side? Just every person or entrepreneurs, like something specific or just gen generally? Yeah, what we can do is uh, for entrepreneurs or the leaders, what do, what do you want to say? And uh, for uh, common man, right? Uh, how, what do you want to say, actually? Let's take it in that way. So, so for everybody, every citizen, every fellow citizen, what I want to say is that fitness is not a luxury item. It is a right. Right to good health is a fundamental right. So please understand that anybody and everybody who made fitness into something that was unreachable, unaffordable, inconvenient, was all wrong. And now we have to change it. And it is something that you should demand, whether you at your workplace or in your life, you should demand that you can make healthier choices and you can be fitter and you can access activity. That is your right. For entrepreneurs who are entering this space, I think there is so much to be done. There is so much work to be done. We're such a large population and there is a lot of latent demand. But like we had discussed earlier in the podcast, it is a very unorganized sector. And for some reason, VCs and investors have, and pharma companies have pushed the narrative that we're a sick country. We're not a sick country. And neither do we want to become a sick country. So there is a lot of potential for everyone to come together and solve. But yes, it is not... It is not e-commerce, it is not fashion, it is not glamorous, it is a lot of hard work, but with a very big positive social impact on society. Okay, that's wonderful. I think uh, uh, it's an open market for everyone, right? I think you have uh, uh, with a wholehearted, uh, welcomed or invited people to start their uh, entrepreneurial journey in this area. I think that's wonderful Absolutely. as an entrepreneur. As an entrepreneur, you are, you are inviting others. That means there's a uh, there only will come to know like what kind of person you are in terms of uh, you're not worried about the competition or you're not worried about uh, say uh, your revenue or anything you are or you you are a person who want to impact the society in a positive way and I think you are on the right track and I think uh, I wish you all the very best for you, you and uh, yeah for That's you and for your yeah thank you. you're welcome for your entire team and i wish to see fit pass uh, going global uh, very soon and you are impacting not only in india but you are also impacting uh, worldwide uh, uh, people across the countries thank you so much for your kind wishes and your encouragement it means a lot thank you very very much we are at the end of podcast i genuinely want to know your feedback on today's podcast whether you really subscribe to the point that is shared by our guest related to fitness and wellness Please share your valuable feedback in the comment section and also please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also show your support. Thank you.